everybody. So today we're con continuing on my series of Disney animated canon and we are looking at one of the great masterpieces of the canon. Just kidding. <laughs> we're talking about Home on the Range. <laughs> and you know when I first reviewed Home on the Range on my blog I gave it a D minus uh, because I thought that at least it had one kind of good number and uh, it looked kind of pretty at certain parts. The scenery, the backdrops, the southwest and everything. So we'll see if I'm as generous in this review <laughs> as a D minus. The Home on the Range is really just completely baffling. I mean, you should you should watch it and you're just like, what? What were they thinking? I mean, I, I just can't fathom what Disney was thinking about a movie with a cow voiced by Roseanne Barr in the Old West would be, I mean, spending $110 million on this movie, I just can't even fathom how those boardroom conversations went down. Like, what on earth were they thinking? I mean, it's not like, I mean, at least Brother Bear, you can think they wanted to sell bears. Are you really going to be selling cows? You know, like, what on earth was the appeal? I mean, it's not like Westerns are particularly popular with little kids. It's not like cows are particularly popular. I mean, I just don't understand where they were like, aha, this will be a big moneymaker here. This will be great. Hmm. So, yeah, Home on the Range. Oh, my gosh, the story is so generic. Holy cow. It's basically a variation on save the church, save the house, save the farm, save the, you know, that we've seen in a million different other movies have had the save a whatever kind of a thing. We've got all a band together to save the, save the farm. We're getting another one of those coming up in December with Sing. We got to save the theater, you know, and kind of a thing. And, and so, and I don't necessarily mind a generic story. Uh, if it's executed well, it doesn't really bother me. This is definitely not executed well. It's about this town in the Old West and all of the cattle are being stolen, okay? And there's this no good outlaw named Alameda Slim. And Alameda Slim uh, has this unique skill, I guess, where he can yodel and the yodeling uh, basically hypnotizes the cows and he's able to round them up somehow without anybody like stopping them or noticing that all the cows are getting rounded up. But he does this from uh, farm to farm to farm. And once the cows are stolen, then the farms aren't uh, profitable anymore. And so then he can uh, step in in disguise as a uh, Yancey o Yodel or whatever, and uh, one, of those, one of those disguises that's just basically like he puts on a coat and a hat, you know, you're just like, yeah, that's a good disguise. He buys the land once it's up for auction, once because they can't make any money. So he's like, oh, his whole thing is to own like this whole, the whole part of the West. So all of that, whatever, it could be, it could be fun. It's bizarre, you know, I mean, just what on earth? How did they come up with this idea that we're going to have this hypnotizing yodeler? I don't understand. And so then you have this one last spot called the Little Patch of Heaven, which is this little farm area, whatever, that's owned by this woman named Pearl. And uh, she has two cows and a bunch of other uh, animals that she, I guess, doesn't kill because they're like her friends and she like loves them very much, like family. And uh, so she, at the beginning of the movie, she buys uh, the this cow that is voiced by Roseanne Barr. And we, and I don't know how she has the money to buy this cow. And, and later on when she needs money, she's literally just bought this cow, this prize winning cow. And yet she refuses to sell her because she's family. and literally she just bought her. How is she family already? That doesn't really make any sense. But if you're looking for Home on the Range to make sense, you probably are are looking at the wrong movie. This Roseanne Barr cow named Maggie. And Maggie is sarcastic and annoying. <laughs> And our first introduction to Maggie kind of gives you a feel for the kind of character that she's going to be. Yeah, they're real. Quit staring. So we have a joke about her udders. And the, it's a good example of 
how on earth did they think that this was going to work? I mean, this is a joke obviously geared towards the adults, but it just feels very distasteful. You know, you're having a joke about breast implants in the middle of your Disney movie, basically. I mean, they're real. <laughs> so bizarre. Turns out that the farm, Little Patch of Heaven, is going to be uh, foreclosed on if she can't pay $750 taxes. And so she doesn't know what to do. And so that's when these three cows, one vo voiced by Judy Dench, one voiced by Jennifer Tilly and Roseanne Barr, end up going to try to catch the Alameda Slim and to turn him in for the $750 prize money. And so they go on this, this journey and Along the way, it's just puns after puns after puns. They meet this whore, Buck, who's voiced by Cuba Gooding Jr. And he loves this sheriff named Rico. And Rico is obviously sort of a Clint Eastwood-ish type. And uh, again, I don't really understand how kids are supposed to know about these kind of things. Like kids don't understand a lot of these Western jokes because I don't think kids watch that many Westerns. And, you know, they're not going to understand sort of these allusions to uh, the classic Clint Eastwood Western films. Uh, but anyway, so you've got this guy, the sheriff, and you have Alameda Slim. And so you're sort of dissecting, in a way, your characters because you've got these multiple villains, these multiple people. And, and so the story gets kind of convoluted in a weird way and uh, it's just basically kind of a cat and mouse game for the rest of the time between the cows and the the uh, between the cows and Alameda Slim uh, the the one sequence that I I think is okay is the yodeling song uh, that they do because I think it has a little bit of a feel of the Pink Elephants on Parade, but I have to say I wasn't as impressed with it as this, I wasn't as impressed with it this time as I was in the previous watch. But I don't know. I, I mean, and there's also a terrible weird joke uh, with this Chinese man who comes in and uh, like he's literally there just just for one joke just for one racist joke it's like and it's just a bad movie it's not good I it's it's not funny uh, Roseanne Barr is super annoying Jennifer Tilly is okay she's probably the best vocals in the movie uh, but Alameda Slim is really a lame villain I, it's just I mean, some of the Alan Minkin score is kind of fun. Uh, he does his hand at sort of this Western feel. That's sort of fun. Uh, but it's just, it's just not a good story. The script isn't very good. The characters aren't very likable. And it's just kind of a slog to sit through. It's not good. And it doesn't really frustrate me as much as Brother Bear in a way because Brother Bear had so much potential to be good. And I don't think this even had potential. This was just a bad idea from start, from the beginning. I, I, it's just... I don't know what they were thinking. I have no idea. It was a tremendous bomb. It was the last 2D animated film they would make for a long time at Disney. Uh, but I don't think it is this. It is the fault of this film that that they went away from 2D film. If you looked at the last bunch, they hadn't really made very much money. And if they had, if you wanted to say anything is the fault of 2D animation. Uh, going by the wayside, it's Pixar <laughs> by making such great films. And so that became the standard and what everyone was trying to catch. And uh, they, so that's kind of what they had to do. And unfortunately, I think the kids had become kind of uh, used to uh, CG animation and that's what they like. So uh, that is that. And anyway, so those uh, that's my thoughts on Home on the Range. I think I have to give it an F. I, I just I did, wasn't even that impressed with the Yodel song this time. I, 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 I guess you, know, you got that nice Alan Menken score. But I don't feel like that's enough to bump it up to a D minus. This movie is a failure. It's just not good. And uh, it's pretty embarrassing, I think. Uh, blight on the Disney uh, 
history. So that's my thoughts on Home on the Range. Let me know what you think of this movie. And uh, thanks so much. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you later. Bye.